Another way that I think the world might be changing with AI, even today, but moving towards this future of the, the powerful, super useful AI, is uh, programming. So how do you see the nature of programming? Because it's so intimate to the actual act of building AI. How do you see that changing for us humans? I think that's going to be one of the areas that changes fastest um, for two reasons. One, programming is a skill that's very close to the actual building of the AI. Um, so the farther a skill is from the people who are building the AI, the longer it's going to take to get disrupted by the AI, right? Like I truly believe that like AI will disrupt agriculture. Maybe it already has in some ways, but that's just very distant from the folks who are building AI. And so I think it's going to take longer. But programming is the bread and butter of, you know, a large fraction of, of the employees who work at Anthropic and at the other companies. And so it's going to happen fast. The other reason it's going to happen fast is with programming, you close the loop, both when you're training the model and when you're applying the model. The idea that the model can write the code means that the model can then run the code and 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 then see the results and and interpret it back. And so it really has an ability, unlike hardware, unlike biology, which we just discussed, the model has an ability to close the loop. Um, and, and so I think those two things are going to lead to the model getting good at programming very fast. As I saw on, you know, typical real world programming tasks, models have gone from 3% in January of this year to 50% in October of this year. So, you know, we're on that S curve, right? Where it, it's going to start slowing down soon because you can only get to 100%. But uh, I, you know, I, I would guess that in another 10 months, we'll, we'll probably get pretty close. We'll be at at least 90%. So again, I would guess, you know, I don't know how long it'll take, but I would guess again, 2020, 2026, 2027, Twitter people who crop out my who 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 crop out these these numbers and get rid of the caveats like like I don't know I don't like you go away <laughs> uh, I would guess that the kind of task that the vast majority of coders do AI can probably if we make the task very narrow like just write code um, AI systems will uh, be able to do that now that said I think comparative advantage is powerful we'll find that. When AIs can do 80% of a coder's job, including most of it that's literally like write code with a given spec, we'll find that the remaining parts of the job become more leveraged for humans, right? Humans will, they'll be more about like high level system design or, you know, looking at the app and like, is it architected well? And the, the design and UX aspects and eventually AI will be able to do those as well, right? That, that's my vision of the, you know, powerful AI system, but I think for much longer than we might expect, we will see that uh, small parts of the job that humans still do will expand to fill their entire job in order for the overall productivity to go up. Um, that's something we've seen. You know, it used to be that you know writing, le you know writing and editing letters was very difficult, and like writing the print was difficult. Well, as soon as you had word processors, and then and then uh, and then computers, and it became easy to produce work and easy to share it. Then then that became instant, and all the focus was on was on the ideas. So this this logic of comparative advantage that expands tiny parts of the tasks to large parts of the tasks and creates new tasks in order to expand productivity. I think that's going to be the case again someday. AI will be better at everything, and that logic uh, won't apply. And then then we all have you know humanity will have to think about how to collectively deal with that. And we're thinking about that every day. Um, uh, and, you know, that's another one of the grand problems to deal with aside from misuse and autonomy. And, you know, we should take it very seriously. But I think I think in the, in the near term and maybe even in the medium term, like medium term, like two, three, four years, you know, I expect that humans will, will continue to have a, a huge role and the nature of programming will change. But programming as a, as a role, programming as a job will not change. It'll just be less writing things line by line, and it'll be more macroscopic. And I wonder what the future of IDEs looks like. So the tooling of interacting with AI systems, this is true for programming and also probably true for in other contexts, like computer use, but maybe domain specific, like we mentioned biology, it probably needs its own tooling about how to be effective. And then programming needs its own tooling. Is Anthropic going to play in that space of also tooling potentially? I'm absolutely convinced that uh, powerful IDEs uh, that, that there's so much low hanging fruit to be grabbed there. Um, that, you know, right now it's just like you talk to the model and it talks back, but, but look, I mean, 
IDs are great at kind of lots of static analysis of, of, you know, so much as possible with kind of static analysis, like many bugs you can find without even writing the code. Then, uh, you know, IDs are good for running particular things, organizing your code, um, measuring coverage of unit tests. Like there's so much that's been possible with the normal, with the normal IDs. Now you add something like, well, the model now, you know, the model can now like write code and run code. Like I am absolutely convinced that over the next year or two, even if the quality of the models didn't improve, that there would be enormous opportunity to enhance people's productivity by catching a bunch of mistakes, doing a bunch of grunt work for people, and that we haven't even scratched the surface. Um, Anthropic itself, I mean, you can't say, you know, no, you know, it's hard to say what will happen in the future. Currently, we're not trying to make such IDs ourselves. Rather, we're powering the companies like Cursor or like Cognition or some of the other, or, you know, uh, Expo in the security space. Um, uh, you know, others that I could mention as well that are building such things themselves on top of our API. And our view has been let a thousand flowers bloom. We don't internally have the the re, you know the resources to try all of these different things. Let's let our customers try it. Um, uh, and you know we'll see who succeeds, and maybe different customers will succeed in different ways. Uh, so I, I both think this is super promising, and you know it's not it's not it's not something you know Anthropic isn't isn't eager to to at least right now compete with all our companies in this space, and maybe never. Yeah, it's been interesting to watch Cursor try to integrate Claude successfully because there's it's actually. I mean, fascinating how many places it can help the programming experience. It's not as trivial. It is. It is really astounding. I feel like you know, as a CEO, I don't get to program that much, and I feel like if six months from now I go back, it'll be completely unrecognizable <laughs> to me. Exactly.